the take-home word for today is minister. To minister is to serve. But it is just a different kind of service. Where do we get the word ministry? Peter had his mother-in-law sick with fever. The Lord healed her of fever. What did she do? She served. She ministered to them. Maybe she cooked lunch. Maybe she checked on their clothes. But she served. She ministered. Ministry is quite different from service. Ministry is actually a religious word because the minister is a servant. You can get ministry of public works. You can hear of ministry of the interior. These are government ministries. But what makes ministry different from the ministry of the Lord is that the motivation for ministry is not the good of humanity. The motivation for ministry is not more votes during the elections. The motivation for ministry is Christ. I have been touched by Christ and therefore I must serve like Christ. So where do we get service? Where does service come from? What inspires people to serve? Number one, the fruit of healing is service. If you have been healed from sickness, you want to show gratitude, serve. If you have been healed from sin, you want to show gratitude, serve the poor. You have been healed from a problem, you have been healed from a difficulty, serve. That is what the mother-in-law of Peter did. She was healed from fever. And after being healed from fever, what did she do? She did not even say thank you. She did not even say, wow, I feel great. What did she do? She stood up right away and served right away. The fruit of healing is service. If you have been given something by the Lord, whether passing the exams, or getting healed from a sickness, or getting your petition granted, getting a job, getting, getting accepted into a job, getting a car, getting a house and lot, doing well in business, all of these are blessings of healing. And if you want to express your gratitude for the blessings of healing, serve. Second, the fruit of prayer is service. Jesus prayed. He prayed all night. And what is the proof that you have prayed well? The proof that you have prayed properly is that you are motivated to serve more. When we pray, we are most likely to feel good. We have bubbling feelings. We have nice feelings. We have feelings of lightness. You feel like you're in cloud nine after a retreat. After praying, you are so at peace, you can sleep at night and you can smile at everybody. Everybody seems to be happy with everybody and everything seems light. But the real fruit of prayer is service. Because when God gives you a bubbling feeling for service, it is not meant for you. It is meant for others. So if you get a feeling of serenity, a feeling of peace, a feeling of joy, a feeling of being brand new after prayer, what should you do? Don't stay there. Serve others. Look for others who have no peace. Look for others who are still struggling. Look for others who are looking for 
light. Look for others who are asking for solution to their problems and serve. The fruit of healing is service. The fruit of real prayer is service. And last, the fruit of teaching is also service. If you are a teacher, you can be admirable with your intelligence. If you are a teacher, you can be edifying with your eloquence. If you are a teacher, you can be convincing with your lessons. But the proof of a real teacher is that the teacher does not attract attention to himself. The proof of real teaching is that it inspires others to serve. It, it moves others to serve. The teacher should not get satisfied with getting an applause. In fact, if the teacher gets applauded and nothing more, then it means the lesson did not properly sink in. Because the real proof that we have been good teachers is that we have inspired others to serve humanity. Brothers and sisters, the proof of Christianity is love. That is why when people are not loving, when people are violent, when people are selfish, when people are proud, we say, you look you don't look like a Christian. But what is the proof of love? The proof of love of service. Somebody who is called a Christian must serve. When the devil heard that the Son of Man was going to take human flesh, the devil being pure spirit, said to God, I will not serve. I will not serve that Jesus Christ because he's lesser than me. He's now flesh and spirit. That is the motto of Satan. Non serviam. I will not serve. The motto of the Christian is serviam. I will serve. When I pray, after praying, I will serve. When I get healed, after receiving healing, I will serve. When I get a blessing from the Lord, after being blessed, I will serve. The proof of teaching is service. The proof of gratitude for healing is service. The proof of real discipleship is service. It is not enough to pray. Truth be told, my dear brothers and sisters, if at the sunset of our lives and we have to face God and God asks you, prove, prove to me that you can go enter heaven. And you are going to say, I prayed the rosary. And you are going to say, I did my dovinas. And you are going to say, you bless me, Lord. The Lord is going to say to you, where are the fruits? Where are the proofs? I want proofs. And the proof of discipleship is service, is ministry. Right away, like the mother-in-law of Peter, constantly like the Lord. Amen.